Hey everybody, welcome back to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle. I own a garden center with my husband in Northern Illinois, Zone 5, 5B to be precise. I also own a floral store, which is right inside the Landscape Connection called Stems Floral, and it's kind of a two-in-one business. So we just finished Valentine's Day, and if you saw my previous video, you saw all the things that we had to do to get ready for Valentine's Day. Well, we're done with Valentine's Day now, and for us, it was a total success. We actually did 196 deliveries on Valentine's Day. And for us, that was a huge record. So we love that we were able to do that. It took a little army of people to do it. We had six designers, six drivers, and four support people in the store to make that happen. We went through all 3,000 roses, and I had to bring in 600 more just to fill all the orders. Now, between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we actually ended up doing 352 deliveries, and over an eight-day period, we hit 603. I was going for 700, but we hit 603, and I will take it because our walk-in traffic was phenomenal. I could not believe how much walk-in traffic we had. It was so awesome. I mean, I had to fill my cooler up like four times and the girls were just knocking that stuff out. It was so fun. The best part of it was, I think it went really well. On Monday, everybody was gone and home by four o'clock. And on Tuesday, I was the last one to go home and I made it home 6.35. I walked in the door at home and all the deliveries were done. So it was a great success for us, but now it's over. Huh. I'm almost glad because it was a lot of work and preparation to go through all of that and it was a joy to do it, but now we move on to the next thing. What is the next thing? Well, we are getting ready for spring and we kind of plan out the events and the things that we want to do through the year and we do a lot of that planning in the winter. So, what are some of the things that we're going to do? Well, I'm going to try my hand at a cut flower garden this year. And the reason why is because we always try to do events and things here at the store. We are a destination location. We're not on a main thoroughfare. We're kind of like set back at the south end of town and we're in a red, kind of sit in a residential pocket. And so we like to have different events that make us kind of stand out. What makes us different? What makes it fun? So one of the things that we're doing this year is we're going to have floral bar mixers. And what they're going to be is on Friday nights, we're going to have a mixer. We're going to charge five bucks to get in. And that's going to cover basically you getting a drink and we're going to probably have some specialty drink that we do every time. And then I'll put out some charcuterie boards where you can get some appetizers and fun things to eat. But really what it's about is social and mixing with your friends and other people. And we are going to have cut flowers for you to be able to make bouquets to take with you and or you can make them in vases or in containers or however you want to do it. And we're going to have that available from like 5 to 7.30. It'll be like an open house format. You can bring your mom, bring your kids, bring your grandma, bring your book club girls, your garden club girls, your shopping girls, your besties, anybody you want to bring. It can be guys too. It's for anybody out there that wants to come and socialize, have a drink, have something to eat, make some memories, put some flowers together, and we'll be charging like by the stem and you know, we'll make it really good pricing so that it's just this fun event. And so we're gonna be doing those all summer long. So to do that, one of the things I wanted to do to make it fun, we're gonna be growing some of our own flowers. And so I have never grown cut flowers just to go out and cut. I've done plenty of landscaping and grown lots and lots and lots of perennials and things like that, but never specifically for this purpose. So I didn't wanna take on more than I could handle. So I'm only gonna do about a 1500 square foot area because this cannot take over my life. This just needs to be this side thing that I'm doing that is manageable and that I can handle. So one of the things I thought I would do is do the video content that goes along with it because I know that there's a lot of interest. It's one of the hot topics right now. It's one of the garden trends right now. But what does it really take to do it? Even on a small scale, maybe you're thinking about doing it and going to a farmer's market and selling it or selling it on a roadside stand or going to a pop-up shop and being able to sell it. What does it really take to do it? Because one of the things that you have to do as a business owner is you have to, you know, you come up with all these cool ideas, but you can't do it and lose money. You have to like engineer it backwards and go, all right, I have to do this much and I have to bring in this many people to be able to do this and make it successful. So that was the first thing I did was I kind of planned what is it that I'm going to grow because I don't want to grow everything. And when I started, my list was long and my list was 
oh, it was unrealistic because I don't have time to garden and do this from sun up to sundown. I have time to do this, maybe dedicate six hours a week to it. Uh, good thing I have employees, but I really don't want to pay employees to do it. So I'm going to kind of pretty much do it all myself. Um, but I don't want this to turn into this overwhelming project that I've taken on. So I'm only going to do about 1,500 square feet, and I've only chosen easy things to grow. I watched a lot of videos and did a lot of research before I decided to do this and engineered my numbers backwards to make sure that I wasn't going to lose money if I did it. So if we don't use the flowers at the mixers, I can always cut the flowers and we can use them at stems floral. And if they don't use them all at stems floral, I can dry them because I also have an idea in my head of how I would use these flowers to dry. So I tried to pick the easiest things out there there were to grow. And I did a combination of both seeds and I brought in some plugs or plants that were already started. I am going to plant three perennials out there as well so that if this goes well, I can always use those next year as well and have a good start on it. And if it doesn't work and I think it's a nightmare by the end of it, I can just dig those up and move them someplace else into the landscaping. Um, I also invested a little bit of money in dahlias so that I can dig, dig those tubers up and overwinter those. And even if this is a nightmare and I don't want to do it, I can plant those back up, put them in pots and sell them next year. So all in all, I'll be able to hopefully not lose any money. Um, I did the math though. So when it came time for me to figure out what it was that I wanted to grow, I really chose things that were either succession planting, but I could do it from seed and I didn't have to start them like in containers or they were plants that I could already get in little plugs and I was ahead of the game or they were cut and come again. So they, they grow, you cut them and then you get more. You grow, you cut them, they, you get more. Now there were some things that I had to do that were a single cut and done. Uh, some of the sunflowers were like that because I wanted to make sure the sunflowers that I grow are pollenless. I don't want people to put their arrangements together, take that home and then pollen is falling all over their furniture. So most of the ones that I found that were pollenless are a one time cut and done. So I'll have to succession plant those. And that means I'm going to plant some, wait, plant some, wait, plant some, wait. And then I'll always be in sunflowers. So what are the flowers that I'm going to grow? Okay. Well, I decided I'm going to grow amaranth because that stuff grows like weeds. It doesn't need to be fertilized. It'll grow in poor soil. Super easy to grow. So I got four different kinds because I think they are super easy to grow. So it's easier for me to read my notes because I did. I sat down one afternoon and I kind of went through what is it that I want to grow. So amaranth, I got four kinds. I got the emerald tassels and they're green and they drape. I got coral fountain and that's like a coral color that drapes. And then I got two upright. I got a hot biscuit and a velvet curtain. So four different amaranth, two are going to grow up and two are going to drape and we're going to grow those. Then I decided that I had to have snapdragons. So I want to get ahead on snapdragons. So I've already started some winter uh, sown snapdragons, which I had in a video. I think it was my, oh, I don't know, my third or fourth video that I did. And I can link that down below. Uh, but I winter did the winter sow and I have the snapdragons going. And then I also ordered some snapdragon little plugs that are going to come in. And I got the rockets because those are the taller snapdragons. And these are kind of what we call group one snapdragons. And they bloom early. So they will be ones that I'll be able to cut for my June mixer. But then I also ordered a packet of, this one is the um, cherry bronze. And now the cherry bronze is more considered like a group three or four because these will grow and I'm gonna do them from seed and they'll come later in the season. So these are gonna be the ones that I'll be able to cut like at the August, September and I'll have snapdragons for that as well. So that was the other thing I had to plan what is going to bloom when and how long does it take them to come to uh, full harvest where I can cut them and when are my mixers going to be and when are things going to be coming into bloom so I can cut them. So all of that was part of the planning as far as like what was going to happen when. Also, I decided that I was going to grow straw flowers. So straw flowers, I ended up doing like an apricot peach color, a raspberry rose, a purple red, a copper red, and an antique white. And so those I'm also going to be able to winter sow. And I just got them in. So I'm actually going to be winter sowing these 
next week and putting them out and then they'll go from the winter sow into the ground. All right, the next one, it's easier to read my notes than it is the little packets. Uh, the next one I decided to do, these are zinnias. Zinnias are super easy to grow. There's all different kinds, but you wanna make sure that when you pick your zinnias, you're not picking short zinnias, you're picking the tall ones. So I ended up getting some of the Queenie Lime Orange, the Queen uh, Red Lime, the Bernard's Giant Mix, and then I actually had some zinnia packets left from last year. And this one is actually two feet high, so I am gonna grow this one. It's a little bit shorter, but I am gonna grow it just to use these seeds up. And then I've also got one that's just a little bit shorter, but I just like the way they look. So we're gonna try those as well. Uh, these were the candy cane mix, but I can already feel there's really not that many seeds in these packets. So there probably won't be a lot of these. But zinnia is one of those ones where you cut and it will grow, cut, grow, cut, grow. And I am gonna start them, I dropped one. I am gonna start all of these from seed uh, right into the ground. So I might not have these until later because most of them are taking 65 to 70 days to bloom. So if I get them in the ground, maybe the second week in May, uh, I might push it a little bit earlier and do some row crop covers so I can maybe get them out the last week in April. Then that means I'm gonna have these more for like the end of July, beginning of August. All right, next thing that I decided to grow was Larkspur. Larkspur, I just did an assorted packet. Those are already winter sown, they're outside. Uh, just sitting out there waiting for it to warm up so that they can get a jump on uh, growing. And so I like the winter sow method because I really don't have to invest in any growing equipment, lights or anything like that. I can just put them in the jugs uh, and put them outside and let nature do its thing. All right, so Larkspur is another one that I chose. I'm also gonna be growing sunflowers. I'm gonna grow four different kinds. So I chose uh, to do the Pro Cut series from Johnny Seeds. Uh, they are one and done, but I want pollenless seeds. Now, I want to talk a little bit about seeds because, you know, you can go to the box store and you can certainly buy seeds. So this one here is a multi-branched purple stem. It's called Chianti Hybrid. It's from Burpee. You could probably buy it at any box store out there. But you want to be careful when you buy seeds like this because when I open this packet up, there's nine seeds in here and that's it. And so you're only gonna get nine plants out of this and you're gonna hope that all of these seeds germinate. Now these were about 35 cents a piece. So if I wanted to plant 50 of these, that is gonna actually cost me, let me grab my calculator. So if I were to get 50, let's see, 50 divided by nine, well actually let's just do it, 50 times, I can use my calculator, times 35, and this doesn't even include tax. So $17.50, $17.50 to grow 50 of these. I'm not willing to invest that kind of money. So I got a lot of my seeds from Johnny Seeds on the internet. So I have 50 sunflower seeds here, and this is the bicolor um, orange, and I paid $5.30 for this packet of 50 seeds. And so I got a lot of my seeds. Actually, I got all my seeds from Johnny's. And the only ones that I have in packet, they're actually seeds that were left over from last year uh, from my seeds that we sell in the store. And I'm like, we're just gonna use those up because I can't sell them because they're past their expiration date, but seeds don't go bad. Um, you can have seeds for years and years and years and they'll still germinate. You might not get you know, an 80% germination rate on it every year that germination rate goes down, but they're still going to grow. I just can't sell them, so I might as well use them. All right. Um, so I did choose the sunflowers. Now, other things that I am gonna grow that uh, I had two packets of Cosmos seeds from last year, and they're these pretty pink and white mix, so I'm gonna grow the Cosmos. I think these are gonna be the biggest pain in the butt out there because they're so wispy and airy and they grow so tall, but I'm gonna grow them for filler flowers because they're super easy to grow and they don't take a lot of maintenance, and I can grow them right from seed. I'm also going to grow Dusty Miller. Now, Dusty Miller, I brought in plugs. So when those come in, I'll just plant those out. I also brought in baby's breath. So I brought 10 plants in. That was it. I just want to try it and see if it's a good filler. Baby's breath is usually one that you have to succession plant, but I don't want to invest a lot in it if I don't like the way it grows. So I brought 10 plants in. We'll use it, you know, at one mixer and if it's great, I'll grow it again. And if it's not, then I don't have to worry about it. I don't have a lot of money invested in it. 
Now, Lysianthus is one that I'm bringing in, and I'm bringing in plugs. It's a little more expensive to bring it in, but man, are they gorgeous. They take so long to grow if you start them from seed. In fact, I would have had to have already started my seeds way back at the beginning of January uh, for the Lysianthus. And I just want to bring them in as they're already developed. I'm bringing them in like right at the beginning of May so I can kind of harden them off over a week period of time and then get them in the ground and then they'll sit there for a minute and then they'll grow. So I'm hoping I have good luck with that. I just brought in one color and I brought in 20, 20 plants. So I'm hoping that those do well. I also got some silver dollar eucalyptus. So I'm gonna grow this here as an annual and I got 20 plugs, so we're gonna grow that as well. I did invest in 18 dahlias and I got some bigger plants so that they'll be ready earlier. But the nice thing about the dahlias is even if they are not a success, I can dig them up and I can store the tubers and they'll multiply their little tubers underneath there and I'll get more and I'll either replant them next year or I'll pot them up and sell them. So either way, it won't be a loss because out of everything that I bought, that was probably the biggest investment was the dahlias. Um, and then I actually am going to bring in uh, 10 of the white gara. It's a really airy plant with white flowers, really super pretty. It'll be a nice filler flower. And then I'm going to also plant some liatris. So that's a perennial. It'll come back every year. And that was one of the perennials that I invested in. And I invested in some Rebecca. And I decided to do the American Gold Rush. So the American Gold Rush is actually the perennial plant of the year this year, but I'm going to plant some of them out in the cut gar uh, flower garden, and those will be ready more towards the end of the summer, and we'll have the flowers uh, at that one. And then I'm also going to plant some gomfrina, and I'm going to plant the Proven Winners gomfrina. I planted it before in the ground, and this stuff is just like massive. You get so many flowers, and you can just cut and come again. And so I've got 10 plants of that coming in along with what we'll sell out in the greenhouse, but I'm gonna plant 10 of them out in the garden. So that is kind of what I've got planned for what's going out there. Now, as we plant these things, I will bring you along as far as this is what I'm gonna plant when and how I'm gonna plant it. It's way too early to plant anything right now, but I will in the next video talk about the plan of how I decided what is gonna go where and when I'm gonna plant everything. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take you outside. I'm going to show you uh, the area where we're going to plant. Oh, but before we do that, I was going to show you uh, how much I actually spent on all of this. Okay, so, and you have to remember that this would be, if you were a business, this is what you would spend. If you were just, uh, and you don't have a license to be able to buy wholesale, double this number, because you're going to spend double what I spent, uh, because, or, or more, uh, depending on where you're buying your product. Okay, so, oh, here we go. Here's my numbers. So based on all the plugs that I'm bringing in and all the seeds, I'm going to spend about $800 on seeds and plants. I am going to spend $375 on compost because I'm going to bring in 15 yards of compost to go over the area that we are going to be planting these rows in. And I'll explain that when we get out there so I don't explain it twice. Um, and then... For everything that I'm going to winter sow in the milk jugs or the pot jugs or whatever it is, the water jugs, I don't have to pay for the jugs because I get those for free, but I certainly have to pay for the dirt that goes in it. So I'm probably going to spend right around, you know, to winter sow everything, I might spend 50 bucks, okay, on all the dirt that I'm going to put out there. Um, then I have to buy the fabric because I'm not going to direct sow into the ground. I don't want to deal with weeds. I'm going to buy the nice expensive fabric. We're going to lay it out, burn the holes in it, and I'll take you through the process of what we're going to do uh, as we do it. And so to buy the fabric for this area that we're going to do, it's going to be 50 feet long and, well, I don't know, it's going to be 50 feet long and 30 feet wide. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but 50 by 30. The rows are going to be 30 feet long and there'll be eight rows in this 50 foot long section uh, to do the landscape fabric for that with the pins to hold it in the ground and the ten dollars worth of propane that I'm going to use to burn the holes in it that's right around 160 bucks and that's at my cost because this is not the cheap fabric this is the good thick fabric um, I'm probably going to spend about 150 dollars on labor because I'm probably going to pay one of my guys to till it and to spread that compost around and then I'll probably take it from there and do the rest of it and then I have to fertilize all of this product 
uh, while it's growing out there. So I'll probably spend about $100 in fertilizer. And when I do the, uh, the mixers, every flower and green that I want to use isn't going to be out in that, uh, in that cut flower garden because one, I'm still working on the timing and Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with the timing that you put on paper. So I will bring in supplemental flowers to my flower vendors and I've set a budget for each of the mixers of how much I'm going to spend on that. And I've set a hundred dollar budget of bringing in other flowers to supplement or complement what I'm doing out of the cut flower garden. So all together, I'm going to spend right around, I wrote it down, oh, $3,000 to do this, okay? And that includes uh, the labor that I'm going to spend at every single mixer to have somebody else there besides me, uh, another designer. And I figured that, you know, you got to set it up, tear it down, and be there for the two and a half hours. So that includes that as well. Now, that number does not include me. It doesn't include my labor, my love, my time. I'm, in essence, not figuring that in my first time doing this. Now, if I were to figure that in, let's just throw, I don't know, when you think about the whole season, let's throw another $1,000 on there. So let's say $4,000 is what I'm spending to do this project. All right, what do I need to make? Okay, well, I am going to be having a mixer in March. Now the March mixer will have none of the cut flower gardens in it, so I'm not including any of that as part of the cost of what I'm doing here because that one will be done with all supplemental flowers brought in from vendors. And it's really the one that I'm using to kind of work the kinks out of what worked, what didn't work, what would have flowed better, what do people really want. And so that's kind of like my, my test run. And we're doing that the first Friday after the first day of spring. And so that's the first mixer. So I sat down and I kind of went, okay, how do I make my money back or make even a little bit of money doing this? How many people do I actually have to get at these mixers? So I did a low number and a high number. And my goal would be to get at least 30 people at each mixer, minimum. If I can't get 30 people at each mixer, I will absolutely lose money. Unless I have one mixer that's crazy high in numbers versus one that's really low. So I need at least 30 people. So I figured it out, if they only spent $20 and 30 people came, I could make $600 every mixer. And if I did one, two, three, four, five mixers, that would be $3,000. That's my break even. So I need them to spend a minimum of 20 bucks and I need them to be 30 people. Now you're thinking, what about that $5 you're charging to get in? That's only 150 bucks, and that's gonna cover my drink and my food that I'm gonna put out. So I have a $150 budget to put out my charcuterie boards and my drink. Now the drink, we're gonna be using um, honey as one of our bases for our drink, and we actually have, this is kind of cool, because we have a honey farmer, I don't know if you call them honey farmers, but, but they make honey, it's over in Pecatonica, which is like the next little township over, and it's called Pecatonica River Honey. And so I'm gonna like actually like kind of incorporate my drinks around the honey product. And so he is providing the honey for free because we are gonna promote his business. The other thing that's really cool is he's bringing beehives over. And so it's gonna go like in this back area behind where the cut flower garden is gonna be. So we're gonna have bees back there to help us pollinate everything. So win-win, it's gonna be really cool. So. The other thing is I don't have to work the food table because I have a girl that's trying to grow her business. I'm gonna buy all the food. Well, she's gonna buy all the food. I'm just gonna pay for it. And she's gonna lay out the charcuterie boards because she's trying to grow her business. So I'm allowing her to work that for free. <laughs> but in exchange, she gets to give out her business cards. She gets to mix with people, meet people, and try and grow her business that way. So hopefully that's a good uh, collaboration for both of us to be able to grow our businesses and she's very new in the business so she's hungry for business and so I hope that this will be a great thing for her to be able to to do because I've been to some home parties where she's done the boards and oh my gosh she is really getting good she does all kinds of really cool things so I'm excited to see what she'll do with it so that's my minimum if you think about it I need 30 people at five mixers spending 20 bucks. Now on the flip side, if I can get more people and I can up my average check, 
then I can make more money. But um, at least I know my break even. And you know what? If you're in any way thinking about doing this, you really need to sit down and spend some time figuring out what is my break even before you just jump in. Because it is so easy to get carried away with the excitement of doing it and how fun it's going to be and the expectations that you set of how it's going to turn out. But I'm going to have to market the heck out of this to get people to come so that they know about it. You can have, my husband says it all the time, you can have the best hamburger out there, but if nobody knows about it, who cares? So I'm going to have to make sure it's on social media. All the networking that I do, I have to talk about it, get, you know, POP up in the store so that, you know, people are talking about it. Um, I have a coupon incentive that I'm putting out there. If you bring a friend, you get a coupon. Bring more friends, you all get coupons for the next one. So, and you want to make it really fun when they come. So my goal would be that I actually get more people than that. And then down the road, maybe I can hire like a little, like a little music band to come and play too. And that would be fun. Or maybe I can find a new music band that wants to do the same thing and play for free to promote their business. I don't know. I'm working on that. So let's go outside and take a look at the area that we're doing this in. And then stay tuned for part two, because that's when we'll talk about the actual plan of how are we planting it? When are we planting it? And how do we figure out when the flowers will be ready? And remember, Mother Nature does her own thing. So all of these will be targets that we're going after. So if you like our videos, please subscribe. If this is your first time here, I hope you made it this far into the video. And thank you for tuning in. If you are somebody uh, that is returning, thank you so much. We certainly appreciate your support. Please like our videos, share, and comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Hit that bell so you know when our videos are coming out. Typically, it's Thursday and Friday nights. I probably will start doing some shorts here pretty soon once the growing season starts because not only am I going to be doing this, but we've got a whole vegetable garden area that we do as well uh, with the community gardens. So stay tuned for that. And with that, we're going to head outside and I'm going to just put this on pause and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're outside and we're at the garden bed area. And it's snowing pretty good. It's only been snowing for a couple hours and there's a good amount of snow on the ground. And we're gonna hope that we don't get all five inches, but we probably will. It's about 32 degrees out. It's kind of a small snow, but it's pretty heavy and wet. So I'm actually gonna flip the camera around and kind of show you the area that I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna flip this around. And as you can see here, I've got this area here that's available for me to do this cut flower garden. And so right here, this is 50 feet long and then it's 100 feet this way. Now I'm not even gonna come close to doing that big of a garden. I'm actually only gonna do it in this area right here. It's about 30 feet deep and 50 feet wide goes to about right here. And it's kind of mounded right here and you can't really see that because I used to have uh, three great big garden beds there that were a total fail, total disaster. They were like 12 feet wide by 30 feet long and they were just this weed infested nightmare so i pulled them apart and i plowed the dirt over we seeded it in and so there's a mound there so it's got about four inch four or five inches of dirt here but when you dig down into this area there's a lot of gravel underneath it it's not really good soil so this is why i have to bring in 15 yards of compost to put on top of this area so that i've got a good growing medium to be able to do these flowers now some of them like amaranth doesn't care what kind of soil you plant it in but the rest of them they're going to want a nicer soil and medium to grow in this over here is where we have our community garden beds so the water access is right here and we've trenched it from this building over there underground and it comes out right here uh, we have 24 raised beds over here that we garden in they're four by 12 the community gardens in these along with me and then it's free gardening and what we do is we ask them just to donate some of their food to us and we take it down to the food pantry and we probably donate between 600 and 800 pounds of food a year out of these little beds and the community that does that and it's pretty cool because if we can give back to our community we're all about that but this is where the cut flower garden will go. And as you can see, there's grass and snow on it now, but it'll clear up and then we'll start prepping it and getting it ready. So as we do that, we'll bring you along and you guys can check that out with us. And it'll be, I don't know, I think it'll be fun to do that. I think it's gonna be very interesting. Okay, so here we are. It's snowing pretty good out here. The snow plower guys are starting to arrive. Um, I actually have to go get myself ready because I snow plow as well. And we gotta go out and clear lanes. So I'm Michelle with the Landscape Connection. Thanks so much for watching. 
I am so glad that you came. Have a great day. Be safe out there. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.